Hi, it's David from Electric Teaching, and I'm doing part three of my calculating an area between a curve and the x-axis using um, uh, integral approximations, uh, left in sum, right in sum, and trapezoid. I'm now going to, we've done left in sum and printed the area, and now we're going to do right in sum and then trap sum. So um, let's see. Uh, first thing I want to do is copy the subroutine and just rewrite it for the right and sum. So I'm going to do a copy of that whole subroutine. And I didn't put a, lay, a comment up above, and I always like to have a comment so for myself as well as for others so that we can see what we're doing. I think it's a good habit if you're learning how to program to always put comments wherever you can. Um, let's see. We are. This one was simply the left-hand sum. I know. The left end, excuse me, I said left hand, excuse me, left end sum. Uh, excuse me if I said that before too. Uh, and now we're going to do the right end sum below it. And I know the, it's pretty obvious with the title there, but sometimes uh, using keyword searches and stuff like that, it's a good idea. So um, I've copied it. I'm going to change a couple of things. Obviously, the name of this function, the name of this function, this little subroutine. We actually are still going to bring in the same thing. We're still going to bring in the left end. We don't need the right end. The right end is only used when we calculate the delta x, and therefore everything off of that. Um, the right end is based upon. So we only we still uh, send the same thing. The number of ends that it requested, number of rectangles, excuse me, um, and uh, the left end point, the starting point, and the delta x. We're going to change this from left sum to right sum. I could probably keep it the same, but I'm just doing that to make sense of it. Now with right and sum, if you've understood your appro numerical approximations for calculating uh, area underneath a curve, which is done usually before integrals in a calculus course, and that's why I like this. It really helps students understand thoroughly what's going on. We don't start at the left end plus zero times my dx. That would make sure I'd start at the left end. We need to start one dx over. So what I'm going to do is put an i plus one in parentheses times the dx, and therefore it'll work uh, to be starting on the right end and be calculating it based on that side. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I then need the same exact height as calculated. I'm going to change this to be right sum and this one as well right sum i could use a plus equals here but sometimes i like to be very clear and we're still going to multiply times the h and delta x and then we're going to return the right sum um, up here we're going to print i'm going to just copy this print line i'm going to paste it below and we are going to put in the right ends the right in um, sum is call out the right in program right in sum and the same things are passed so we can leave that alone and that's the advantage of copying and pasting that so i think that should work nicely let's quickly run it and check it to see if we're okay i'm going to save it okay and it asks for an equation i'll do x squared if you do two stars it's uh in python that's squaring uh versus the um uh, normal shift six or the caret uh, let's run it from 0 to 3, and let's put, I don't know, 1,000, maybe 1,000 rectangles or no. And you can see that our left end sum, this is an increasing x squared curve, so if you can see my mouse here, it's an increasing curve. So left end sum will be getting smaller than the actual sum, and it looks like it's approaching 8.98, that's what the left end sum, and 9.013 which tells me if we actually did the exact integral, we would probably end up at 9, or really darn close to 9. So it seems to be working. Let's um, try to add the trapezoid. Trapezoid's real simple. Okay, put a comment here. Uh, let's skip a line here. Comment. Um, trap. Um, area. Approx. And of course, the trap area approximation is a closer approximation than either the left or the right end. That's why we teach it. And sometimes there's that's the only way to um, to bring it in. Um, I was trying to actually use 
sorry, I got a little lost in my thought there. Um, but um, I was trying to bring in what the Python showed to come up, which was the num le and dx, because we still have to pass the same information. We still have to pass the same information. So the trap sum is real simple. T sum is equal to the average of the right and left end. So if you think about the way the formula is, the formula adds up all the um, trapezoid areas, which is the A plus B over 2 formula for the trapezoid. That takes the two base lengths, the top base and the um, uh, bottom base on a trapezoid formula. Um, but what that works out is if you play with the algebra that you're actually just taking an average because of the um, um, extra um, multipliers of the trapezoid common widths in between or common sides in between. I hope that makes sense. I didn't bring up a visual of uh, any of my notes, but uh, hopefully you remember your, your um, calculus lesson well enough that that can make sense at least a little bit without seeing the algebra. So like I said, we're going to take half of half of the um, added, the right sum and, and left sum, which will be the average. So I need to do half star, can't use just parentheses, and I'm going to call up the right end sum, and I'm going to pass the same uh, num D, uh, le and dx that I've been passing. Um, and I need to use num here, le and dx, not the n and left end because it's coming in as those letters, and so I'm sending those letters over to here to be calculated. I hope that makes sense program-wise. Same thing, except I'm just adding the return value that will come back from this program. So basically we're taking, calling out a program, a function, a subroutine, excuse me, and it when it hits the return uh, variable uh, command, it passes back and substitutes this whole phrase out with that quantity. Uh, we need to also, in the same idea, return, let me scroll so you can see, but we need to return this T sum and then call it up in a print statement just like we did up here. So come up and copy the print statement and paste. Make sure it's indented properly. Change this to be the trapezoid sum and in parentheses let's show people we know what we're doing the average of right and and left and sums is parentheses space and then right here we're just going to call the trap and we still send the same exact information so that's why the copy works really nicely i believe that works let's just try it Running it, saving it. Oh, I have an error. I have an error. Let's see. Oh, forgot a colon when I made a subroutine. So put that in. Let's just do simply x. Let's go uh, 0 to 2 and like a 1,000 or so trapezoids. So you can see the value is approaching 1.98 from the left, 2.02. .02. So if you're thinking of limits, the limit between these left end and right end approaching it is approaching the trap sum of two. It seems to work, seems to be a nice average. One of the things I like to also test, let me run it again, is a value that's going to end up being zero. So I try to find a, a, um, uh, an odd function, an odd function like x cubed is an odd function. And this has symmet origin symmetry, which means that if we run it from a left end point like negative three to a right point of three, we will hopefully get a zero for an, uh, an actual integral answer because I should have equal amounts on the negative side. Let's do a thousand trapezoids. And let me hit return a bunch of times. And I want to show you the result here. And we should have um, equal amounts on the left side, as I was saying, as well on the right side that's positive. And you can see the left end sum is negative 0.162, almost zero. And the right hand sum is the exact opposite side of that, approaching zero. And this number, I need to understand that, that's scientific notation, just like on your TI-83. That's e to the uh, zero point, excuse me, to the 10 to the negative. It's not e, excuse me, it's exponent. But it's 10 to the negative 15th, which means this is a very tiny, tiny number, or basically approaching zero. Well, that's the end of this little lesson. I'm now going to create another lesson that combines my graphing program 
with this calculating integral idea and we're hopefully going to have an area underneath the curve or better yet between curves which the TI-83 doesn't do um, graphed and also approximate the area accurately using the idea from this program as well as the sequence on make your own grapher that I have in my um, electric teaching channel. Again, I'm David from Electric Teaching and I hope this has been interesting and I hope I've provided something that you and your calculus students are just learning how to program, uh, learning how to just get used to Python programming that, that this is beneficial. Thank you for listening.